Hey crafty family, it's me. Um, so today we're gonna do something fun, but real quick I wanted to show you what we did in the live stream last night. By the time I get this video up, it might have been the day before last. Um, but I did a live stream. Um, I announced it on my Facebook in the last video, and it was a lot of fun. We had a blast. I was able to do it. Um, I couldn't do, you know, like I remember, I don't know if some of you know that I did a couple live streams back on Ustream, but that was because I had somebody here who had a laptop who could pay attention to the chat. <clears throat> My laptop broke, so I can't do Ustream because it won't let you see the chat on a mobile device, so I couldn't have like my tablet. Um, up to see the chat because Ustream doesn't allow, for some reason, doesn't have that feature on their mobile devices, only on a computer. So, make a long story short, I can't use Ustream and I'm kind of annoyed with Ustream and I don't really like that they do that. They're eliminating a lot of people from being able to chat with people because a lot of people, you know, use mobile devices to watch videos nowadays. It's not all computers. So, anyway, so I decided to give, I, you know, I kept thinking, oh, you know, I wish I could do YouTube because YouTube, um, they don't have theirs available yet on mobile devices at all so you can't even record your live videos on mobile devices as far as i know i don't know if they've changed things but as far as i know they don't have it on where you can use like your phone to record a live stream for youtube um and so i don't have a webcam or like i said my laptop broke so this was i thought of this and i was like oh yeah what about facebook live duh and it like dawned on me that all this time i could have been using facebook live so it worked out pretty well it only allows you to do 90 minutes and then it cuts you off so you have to like redo it uh start a new live stream which is fine it worked out fine everybody followed us to the new live stream you know when the first one cut us off so we went to the next one i think we did like three or four of them um and there was like 36 people we had a great time everybody stayed hours and hours i thought we would maybe do two hours it ended up like five or six hours it was crazy but it was so much fun and we did um we did uh we worked with the brushos um because i got these brushos as a gift and so um, I'm going to, uh, I promised that I would do these and I'm going to do these, uh, today. We're going to work with some of the brushos, um, because I got these as an anonymous gift and it was, I got them like a couple months ago and I was trying to figure out where I got them from because the box came, they came in a box and it was unmarked. It just had my address on it and all the postal stuff, but it didn't have a return address. Um, and or no it had an address it didn't have a name i think that was it i can't remember but anyway i thought it, i didn't know whether it came from the company so i was trying to investigate where they came from before i just started using them because i didn't want to like if it came from the company i i didn't want to like use them and then not do it right I, you know like if they wanted me to do something specific so i went through a lot of trouble trying to figure it out eventually long story short i figured out who it was they just wanted to stay anonymous and they forgot to put a note in it and so <laughs> so finally i got to play with them on camera um i did that last night in the live stream you can't i i actually told everybody you're not gonna be able to see the live stream but actually you still you can catch the whole thing it's backwards so like the very first video you see on my pink poodle crafts page you know as the live stream is going to be the last part of the video so you need to start on like the fourth one down because they're all like in order so if you go to pink poodle crafts um, Facebook page and you scroll down a bit and see where the, vi the live videos were the first one you're gonna see is the last like you know however many times you know the last one that we did because like I said it only lets you go 90 minutes and there's four of them the last one was actually very short because that was just the one it, it, it had cut us off and then I did another one just to say goodbye so if you go down start at the bottom one start at the last one that you'll see as you scroll down and that'll be the first one and that's the one where I play with the brushos and I make these two awesome um what do you call it postcards so I made these cool postcards and yeah they came out awesome and I well I did the backgrounds with it so that's what we're going to do today I'm going to show you how to do that um and then after that we did painted fabric and here's a bigger piece of it um it's cool I'm gonna take this piece and see these here aren't these notebooks adorable they're so cute and they're only 97 cents at Walmart right now so I grabbed three of them and I advise anybody if you want to make your own Fodori which is a Midori like a fake Midori 
which is that kind of notebook with the elastic in the center and you slip the books underneath of the elastic. Um, anyway, these books are awesome so you can make your own Midori and I got, I, I made one before and where is it? Oh, here it is. I made this one from the last piece of, I just haven't done anything with it yet, but this is from the last piece of fabric I painted. I made this one. But the problem is, I didn't have these books yet, and I'm going to make my own books for these, because you can make your own books very easily, and it doesn't fit. It sticks out, so I decided to just make one that was wider so I could fit, and it's much wider by a little bit, so I can fit a couple of books in here, um, and this way I'll finish it off, um, make it look nice on the edges and everything, and make it all fancy. Um, so I'll do that probably in another video. But yeah, these books, they have different colors with little sayings on the front and they're perfect. They're absolutely perfect for making your own Midori because they have like the center you could see where your elastic could go through. So these are perfect for 97 cents. It might even have been 87 cents. I don't know. I picked up three, but I plan on going back and getting a whole bunch more of these. Because even if you don't like the outside, you can cover it. So you know for that much money it's it's worth it it's so cheap so that's what that piece is for and then I've got these little bits that are left over after I cut that and then the ATC's and these I'll make into inchies so these are adorable so I'll turn those into inchies I'll back them on some um, chipboard and they will be inchies because they're a little flimsy right now so it'll be easier if I back them on something so those are cute maybe I'll do a video of making those and working on some of the ATC's I haven't done any kind of inchies I did regular art tiles which are like pretty much random sized but these are some of these are not quite inchy you know what I mean I just kinda cut what I could but you know for the sake of argument they're basically inchies or art tiles and then these are the um, these are the uh, ATCs, which of course I'll back on chipboard as well. And they turn out looking like, kind of like these do. Like this one's completed. I put some little gold butterflies on it. I don't usually, when I decorate these to finish them off as ATCs, I don't like to cover a lot of the pattern because the background is the best part. So like for instance on this one, I just put the word hope and a little star and a little heart because I don't like to cover the background because that's the nicest part of it. So, and you could just leave them just like this and just back them on some chipboard and call it done because, I mean, really, you did, I mean, you do all this work on painting the fabric and, you know, so they look nice enough, honestly. Um, so, yeah, so this is the ATCs I got. And so now, and you've seen me do the painted fabric. We did that in another video. But today, I want to play with the brushes. I'm going to move this glass out of the way. So I'm going to get a piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to use a smaller piece. Actually first, because I wanted to use the brushos on this um, piece of chipboard, uh, you know, a die cut. So what I want to do first is I want to color this with some uh, gesso. I'm going to color that with my gesso first so that as we're playing with the watercolor paper, that will have a chance to dry while we're messing around with the other part. So that's what we'll do. We'll give her a coat of gesso. I might have to go back and give her a second coat. One might do. And then we'll play with them because I want to try it on a piece like a die cut I have not not ever used them on a die cut before so we'll set that aside and already I'm a mess look at that I'm a hot mess but if you missed the live show I hope you'll go check it out um, on my page I'll put the link below or it might even be I might have it automatically set to be below um, but yeah it was so much fun and we all just chatted and hung out and it was really loose and just you know it was just a good time i mean i know that the time isn't going to work for everybody all the time but i'm going to try to do it like once a week and i'm not sure if i'm going to do it on a friday night or a sunday night so i'm kind of still thinking about it but i'd love your feedback in the comments and um i can't do it during the week uh during the week is too rough so that's out 
Saturday nights, I prefer not to do that on a Saturday night. Um, so it's either got to be a Friday or a Sunday. So, and it has to be around eight o'clock at night. So that's basically my limit. So it's either got to be Friday or Sunday at 8 p.m. And it's eight, and for me, it's 8 p.m. Eastern time. So let me know which you prefer, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern or Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Let me know in the comments which is more preferable for you to be able to watch. And it's very simple. You just go, when, when I do the live stream, it'll just pop right up. You don't have to log into anything. If it, you know if you already have a Facebook account, you don't have to log into anything. You don't have to do anything special. It's just like if you were watching a video on Facebook. You know when you're scrolling through and somebody posts a video, you just click on it and that's it, and it starts and you're done. Um, so and even if you come in late, it's okay. You can click on it whenever you get to it, and it will be you know already in progress. And then if you miss anything, you can go back later and watch the beginning of it. Obviously. I don't, it's not going to post to YouTube, but that's okay. And I could go through the trouble of downloading each video and because like I said, it only lets you go 90 minutes. So we have to start a new one, um, which was a little confusing for some people because they thought that the still the same video was going to just start up again, but you actually have to go back out, refresh, and another video will pop up above the last one. Um, but I could download all of them, splice them together in the movie maker and then put them on YouTube but that's a lot of work and it would be like you know five hours of video and I really don't want to have to do that it's not it's I mean you guys can watch it on my Facebook so there's no real need to put it on YouTube I mean unless um, I was worried about oh you know need to you know makes a little bit of money off of it because you know I get money off of the YouTube ads but I really don't care I mean that's not why I do things so I'm not gonna bother wasting time um, going through all that so I got this cheap set set cheap pad it's kid made monitors from uh, Target and I, it's perfectly fine watercolor paper and it's cheap I'm almost done with it I've only got a couple sheets left yeah two sheets so maybe we'll use both of those and I could be done with this pad maybe I can only get one out at a time I'll just be done with it I've had it forever I'll have to cut it here because it's got like a perforation line but sometimes it doesn't sometimes it don't like me let's see this piece of chipboard can be used so I recycle everything so I'm gonna tear that off I don't need the cover and what I'll do really is probably cut it here you don't mind if I do that now do you It's a nice thick piece of chipboard. I mean, it's thick. So this would be good to do like a canvas painting on, you know, like a mixed media. I could do a, a mixed media piece on this because it's so sturdy. It's a nice piece. So yeah, I keep all stuff like that. It's useful. Because canvas is expensive and, you know, we don't need all that. I didn't quite get it all the way. Did I? Maybe I did. I made a mess of it. This one's just a little... And I've got more watercolor paper. I've got a lot of watercolor paper, actually. It's coming out of my butt. But I like to use up every little bit, so... <clears throat> okay. So, uh, brushos are watercolor... Uh, powdered watercolor. I'm sure you guys have heard of Ken Oliver's um, uh, color bursts and they're the powdered watercolor in the little bottle. Um, so these come in packs of, let me see if I can get this straight, 8, 12, and this is a 12 pack, 24, and I'm not sure, but I think when I looked it up I saw a 48 pack. Not sure. Somebody told me that what colors are in here are not going to be the same colors and then plus another however many colors to make up the, like this is a 12 pack, so the 24 pack isn't going to be the same colors, completely different colors, which is awesome. Um, and I'm hoping that eventually I can get the larger pack because I absolutely love these to death. They are so flippin' awesome to play with. It's crazy. Like, awesome. And all you need is some water and a piece of paper and you can make amazing backgrounds with these amazing so 
And what you do is when you get them, they don't have a hole in the top, but it's very easy because they are made, meant to do this. You, t you don't open this part. You don't open the lid. That's why the lid's on there so well. You take a tack. I mean, you could open the lid if you really wanted to, but it's not necessary. You take a tack and you poke it through. And then I took my little pokey tool thing, uh, which is a little fatter like this. And I go in there and I poke and I go like that to get it a little bit wider which who knows, I may need it. So actually I'll use this one if I do. Um, because sometimes they don't come out like this one, uh, the black, which I may use that. Let me try to get that one a little wider. So I have never used the black yet. So, okay. So there is 12 colors and we've got purple. I'll pull them out. <clears throat> Scarlet, brilliant red, dark brown, turquoise, ultramarine, orange, black, emerald green, leaf green, yellow, and lemon. Now, the only disappointing thing is that there isn't a pink in this but I was told that you can buy these separately. So if I'm unable to, cause they are a little pricey, but you get more color in each bottle than you do in a color burst bottle. So color burst, the price of those was like 20 something dollars and you got, I think six colors, okay? In each of their bottles, they have like eight grams of powder. In here, it's 15 grams of powder. So you get like almost double the amount of powder in the color in the brushes than you do the color bursts. And these for the 12 pack, I think when I looked at it, it was $32, I want to say. $32 or $35. I think some places had it for $40, like $39.99. But if you look hard enough, you can find it a little cheaper, I think. Because I, I kept searching around to see what the best price was. Um, because of course I didn't pay for them, but I wanted to see, I wanted to kind of compare prices between these and the color burst and so but basically they're the exact same concept um i just think these are a better value honestly i i've not tried the color burst so i don't know but i did look and see how much pigment was in each bottle compared to these and these have more pigment so they might be a little bit more than the color burst but you get more colors and you get more color you know in the thing which to me is the most important thing you know that I'm extremely frugal and I'm actually gonna this is dry I'm gonna throw another layer I know I'm, I'm like holding you guys back right I want to throw another layer it's not white enough for me so I'll fast forward so you don't get bored okay alrighty so all you gotta do is, I try to keep these back further so I don't get spray water on them because you don't wanna spray water around that nozzle because then it's gonna clog up because your watercolor powder is going to you know, get stuck. So I try to keep them back far enough so I don't get them wet. And you're going to spray water and pretty much saturate the whole page. You can keep spraying, like look, see, from playing with them, I got a little bit on there. It only takes a tiny drop and you will have color on your on your page. See, this is from just playing with it. I got a tiny drop, but that's okay because I'm gonna be putting lots of colors on here. So let's start out with some lemon yellow. I may have to open this just a little because I don't think I used this one. Okay, so all you do is sprinkle it and you watch the magic happen. It's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. Look at that color, isn't that flipping amazing? Then we're gonna do the scarlet which is a really pretty red color. So I might not do all the colors, like sometimes, like last night I was doing like every color. I might just do like some springy colors on here and you can go through and like wet the page more as you need to. And then we'll do maybe an orange. Here we go, let me widen this one a little bit. Go through and we'll put some orange and you see the magic happen. I will actually zoom you guys in just a little more so you can really see what I'm doing. Let me just move those back. 
so. Don't be afraid to keep spraying the paper. That looks cool as it is, doesn't it? It's flipping awesome. So what should we put? Some green? Something a little different? Let's see. I've got scarlet. I've got brilliant red. We use scarlet. Let's see what the brilliant red is like. Ooh, that one's coming out really a lot. I gotta be a little more gentle with this one. <laughs> That's really pretty right there. So pretty. And what's nice is you can kind of tip it around and move it around and get the water going. But see, my favorite is like how it looks like these little fireworks. That's like my favorite thing. I love it. So I think I'm going to leave this one as is because it's really pretty yellow and red and maybe I'll just add a little bit more a different yellow we'll add the other yellow because I added the lemon let's just add a little bit of a different yellow since we added the other one that one I got a lot of granules in one spot so now, now see how it's kind of puddling there? Hold on a second. My paper towels were under my desk. Anywhere where it's puddling just a little too much, if you take a dry paper towel, you don't want to use a baby wipe, and just kind of soak it, just touch it to it very gently. And you can even like pat around some of the color a little bit to get it moving. But you want to soak it up just a little bit. It'll be easier to dry it. So if it's coming off of your page or dripping, and like with anything, um, I'm going to move this little dot around so that the color can, look at that. You can even take like, like your tools and like go through and do that to it and stuff. It's really cool. So here's another little condensed dot of color. You can kind of go in and make these little, oh, that's kind of cool. I kind of dig that where you go in and just take something pointy and just... Maybe I'll do that. See, like you could do all kinds of stuff with this and make fun little, fun little, whatever you call it, like lines and little, it looks like flowers or like a something. It looks like something. But these are badass. These are so badass. It's not even funny. water there. I like all these little, I make like making the lines. Those are kind of cool. Actually, if we put just a little bit more, where's that red? Where's the, not the scarlet, where's the red red? Brilliant red, here we go. Just a little bit right there a little bit right there a little bit right there and then you spray it and then see take that's so cool and then it just turns into this I don't know amazing thing so I'm gonna hit this with the heat gun real quick away from these and then we're going to see what we get out of it. And you don't want to hit it real close or else your colors are going to move because there's a lot of water on here. So you want to do it from a little bit of a distance. Unless you want the colors to move, obviously. So it's pretty much just about dry. There's no more like really runniness to it. But isn't that beautiful? And like where I did those little scratch marks, you see how it gives you a little bit of um, gives you a little bit of texture in there. And I think that's really cool. So that came out really awesome. Really pretty colors. We're gonna set that aside. And let me see. Let me zoom out just a little. 
Okay, so you see how there's still color around here on my desk. This will not go to waste. It's not going to go to waste. However, I'm trying to find a paper. I don't have a blank ATC. How do I not have a blank paper around? Hold on one minute. Let me go grab something. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a piece of cardstock and I'll use that. So in this instance, what I'm gonna do is take my water, block that, and I'm gonna go spray all of this because there's all kinds of color on my desk that was from the overflow that can be picked up. So now, go and get color and have the start of a another page another set of ATCs another something and you see it's really wet but there's color on there so you can do that again and again with the same sheet and have another paper or you can use another piece of watercolor but I'm down to the last piece of the little watercolor so I don't want to use a big piece okay so now we're going to do some different colors and okay so we've got another piece of paper and now we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to grab a stencil. This is a Deco Arts um, Andy Skinner stencil. this is what you can also do with these. It doesn't fit all the way, but it fits good enough. You can take your water. Now in this instance, I'm going to get a piece of washi tape and I'm going to tack this down so I don't move it. Because you know me, if I, can, if I can screw something up, I'm going to screw it up. <laughs> so, I'm just going to tack it over here. And over here. And that will be fine. Now what we're going to do is spray the water through the stencil. So that the paper gets wet. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to just pat it over the stencil, but the paper will hopefully still, if not, I'm going to try it again. Maybe a paper towel would be better. Here. I'm just going to dry off the stencil, so I'm going to lightly go over it so the stencil is more dry. And now I'm going to use other colors. And I'm going to try to get it less on the other part of the stencil because we're going to spray it again and more where I want it to be. This one I think needs, needs its hole poked. That's what she said. There we go. And then we're going to use a little ultramarine. And we're going to use a little scarlet. And actually I want purple. This one needs its hole poked too. Okay, and now I'm going to attempt to do this without screwing it up. <laughs> I might want to, that's not tacking down very well. I might want to tack down the edges just a little better. Which that's not tacking down very well. Oh, 
Okay. Now we're going to try. Now, of course, it's going to be very watercolory, so you're not going to get a perfect pattern out of this. But it's going more on the stencil than the, I think the stencil had the holes are too small, but that's okay because we're going to get two different things out of this. First, I'm going to take another piece of watercolor paper, a bigger piece. I should have had this out and ready to go, but of course I didn't. Oh, and I can't move around here. So I'm going to cut this so that I don't use the whole thing when I only need a piece. And I'm going to lay this on top. And look how cool that is. Isn't that groovy? And now I could take this piece here and get off the any more excess. That's that piece we cleaned up with before. Still looks groovy. Now we're going to take off the stencil. And we may need to spray this. It may not work because I didn't realize how small these holes are, which makes it very hard because the water wanted to go onto the plastic and didn't want to go in between the holes. But look at that. It's still flipping awesome. Flipping awesome. That really is groovy. Clean off my stencil a little. Is that not the coolest thing ever? But now, let's see what happens when I spray it with water, because I've never done that. Let's see. Let's see if we get a more intense... Uh, I'm running out of water. Of course, that would happen right now. Actually, I'm using alcohol, not water. Good Lord. Not that it matters. It's going to do the same thing. But look at all that color. Isn't that cool? Oh my goodness, groovy. Okay, now we're gonna dry it. Isn't that cool? It's like a mandala kind of. That is flipping groovy. So cool, and not only that, but we've got this one as well. So you get two for the price of one, basically. And then that other one that also worked, but that's really cool, and if I cut around that and use it on a project, um, yeah, look how colorful that is. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. And again, we have some runoff spray. Move these out of the way. That we can take water to, not alcohol. Because <laughs> I have bottles with water and alcohol, and I don't know why they were sitting out like that. And we could take this other piece and start sopping up the color so that nothing goes to waste. And I'm going to use this page anyway, so at least I'm getting it nice and wet to start with. So how cool is that? I'm going to find my rag which fell. Ooh, there it is. Draw this off and then we have this one to play with because we got it started so now I'm gonna put some water in my bottle not my alcohol bottle <laughs> okay and now I will I didn't have you zoomed back in I don't think let's see me in a little bit and let's do some more colors this time um, there's some color on there but we're gonna cover that up with a little bit of black we're gonna add blacks and blues in there and it's gonna be awesome so we'll do like some ultramarine and we'll do the turquoise Just a little more. Of 
cool. And now we're going to do black because I've never used the black yet. So I want to see how cool that turns out. I bet you it's awesome. Oh, that's really cool. That's like, um, and there's so many different colors within each color. So like the black has a little bit of like an orange to it. It's not just black. That's the cool thing about these, um, is they're not just one color. They're kind of a mirage of colors all in one. All of them are like that. So I'm just going to sop up a little bit here. Because I kind of like this how it is, um, I might just add a little bit of the ultramarine here, here, and just gently spray. Don't have to spray that one. And maybe a little purple. Where's my purple? Maybe that's the punch it needs, a little bit of purple. And we'll make like a galaxy looking. I think that looks awesome. Awesome sauce. Now I'm going to dry it. Actually, uh, you know what you can do? You can get two prints out of one if you take another piece of paper and, which I don't have for some reason, and put it on top of the other one, which I'm not going to do that for this one, but maybe for the next one, because I kind of like the way this looks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one dry because I don't want to hit it with the heat gun. I want to let it dry just the way it is. Um, I'm just going to help some of these get to the edge over here. Um, so that it gets fully covered, but I'm going to pretty much let this one kind of dry on its own and just let it go and just sop up a little bit over here where it's getting just a little too much. And let it dry on its own. And then, you know, that would make a cool, like, <clears throat> like galaxy beginning, like a background for a galaxy, because I could take some white paint and splatter it on there and make planets and everything. So that's why I want to let that one dry. And then we'll do another one where we take the paper. We'll have two pieces of paper. We'll make it nice and saturated and we'll put one on top of the other and see what kind of print we get. So let me go let this dry fully and then I'll be back. Okay. So look how cool it looks. It literally looks like, like a deep space sky. Isn't that awesome? I think that's awesome. I may cut it up into ATCs and make little ATC, like deep space ATCs with it. That might be a cool thing to do, but it's very cool. Very cool. Love it. So, okay. So now we've got this left. It got a couple spots on it. That's okay. What, I'm, what I've decided to do, actually, instead of just do the typical thing, I want to try something else. I want to try taking some white paint and watering it down and putting it on here and while the paint is still wet, dripping in the um, dripping in the brushes to kind of give it a totally different look. So I'm taking watered down white paint, putting it on pretty thickly. Just kind of dabbing it on. I'm just going to play with it a little bit. Put 
putting the scarlet and maybe the uh, turquoise if I can maybe the purple actually would look cool and now I'm going to take some of the water if I can get this brush to stay out of the way and kind of let it do its thing like that. Look how cool that looks. Whoa. I just want to leave it like that. Grab a paper towel. And I'm going to just dab a little bit off. Like so. In some spots. Just to let it keep its light kind of color. I don't want it to get dark. See, the white paint's going to act as like, you know, when you dilute anything of white paint. Look how cool that looks. It's like almost like a shabby chicish look. I think that came out awesome. So that's kind of fun to do. To take the white paint and put it on and then spray the water on it while the white paint's wet. That came out really cool. So I'm going to leave that like that. And now I'm going to take another piece. Actually, let's see. No, not that one. I will take, I will cut a piece off of here, off one of my pages. Spray some water. lots of things you can do with these. You can use them in many ways and make some really cool stuff. Alright. Okay. Very cool. Very groovy. 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 Okay. So we're going to clean this up much left on there to do anything with. And you can even save your paper towels if you want. I don't really do that, but I know a lot of people do. So one thing I don't really do is save paper towels. Because I end up wiping up more than just the paint. I end up wiping up glue and all kinds of other things and they end up being a mess. So Okay. So now we're going to do one more where we take a piece of watercolor paper And we're going to cut it, and I'm going to just make four squares with it, since I already kind of cut this one. And I'll just use these two squares. And for the first one, I will wet it down. I'll put this aside. And we'll put loads of color. I love how that goes. And you can see if you look over here in the purple, there's not just purple, there's like a blue in it as well. So like each color has more than one color. I'm trying to hold it down so it doesn't run all over the place. We're going to use a little green in this one. Spray that some more. Grab the other page and make two, two, two prints in one. Dab anything away. 
probably getting it all over my sweater because I should have taken it off because I got cold before. Give it time to soak into the other paper. And look, look how cool. Let it run. Groovy. Very cool. Very cool. Lots of fun things you can do with these. Very cool. So now we've got two awesome prints. And I could take one of these again and go like that and pick up some other colors in there. And make it look cool. So yeah, get you some brushos. If you can't get a whole set, you can buy them individually and just start off with like four colors, you know, because I only did this with three colors and look how cool it is. So I mean, you don't have to have the whole set. You can buy like three colors, like the scarlet, the yellow, the turquoise, or the purple, the scarlet, and you know, something else. You could just start out with just a few colors and slowly get more. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show you guys was how much fun you can have with these. They make great backgrounds. They're a lot of fun. They make your hands nice and colorful. <laughs> but this one's my favorite because yeah, that just looks badass. It really does. And this one's really cool. I like this too. They all came out cool. Even this one. Nice and bright. Fun to make things with. And these will be awesome too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, I hope you guys let me know if you've ever tried brushos or um, the color bursts. And I know there's another company, I can't remember the name, that makes similar uh, water, uh, dried watercolors that you could sprinkle on things, uh, but I can't remember off the top of my head what the name of it is. But let me know if you ever tried it or if you plan on trying it, but it is so much fun. And if you have tried it, what's some things that you've done with it that's really cool? I'm interested in knowing. So I hope you have fun this week and have a good week. And, um, I am going to be doing a giveaway this weekend finally we're going to do a big giveaway I know it's taken so long and I apologize please don't be mad but it's just been oh uh, it's been a long year for me so far it's not even over yet so it's just been a lot I've had a lot going on so bear with me so I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people and I'll talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bye.